yes let's start the explanation in this some natural phenomena the concept of the whole chapter is i will be explaining the basic of the whole chapter the concept of the chapter is dealing with that uh, the objects starts with the charging and the first part is lightning so in lightning the main part is that what is lightning and uh, what are the causes you can type if you have uh, any query now first thing starts is you might have seen sparks on the electric pole this is quite common so this is the lightning which is caused in the due to electricity then you must have seen sparks when a plug is loose so that is electric spark and the electric sparks are caused due to the loosening of the electric signals now here we are talking about natural phenomena so the lightning which is caused in the nature is explained here so uh, the first thing which you have to understand is what was the cause of the lightning so in the ancient time people did not believe they were afraid of lightning and that the it was the that the god was angry so at present time we know that this is not something which is scientifically correct so we understand that lightning is caused by accumulation of charges the charges which are in the cloud so first we have to understand that uh, how is the lightning caused and how are the charges produced so here the first part is the sparks that the greeks know about so in this the first portion is that in the 600 bc uh, now this thing is important amber the name of the material and in this the greeks found that in 600 before christ that where amber resin it is amber is a material which you get from the trees and it becomes hard and when it is rubbed with a material like fur of an animal then uh, it gets charged and it starts attracting objects and uh, when you take off woolen clothes then also you must have seen that whenever we wear woolen clothes and we remove them then they get charged and they start attracting hair so at times you must have seen that there are sparks also produced in the woolen clothes so in 1752 the name of the scientist you should remember he showed that lightning which is caused from the clothes was due to the same phenomena due to the charging and the first concept is charging by rubbing how does an object get charged and there are some top materials given in this portion in this chart so first see this portion of the book when a plastic riffle is rubbed with polythene the name of material you should know a riffle is a plastic and you rub it with polythene and it acquires a charge how will you know that an object is having a charge it will start attracting some objects and those objects are light objects during this charging the refill and the plastic comb also get charged so when they get charged they they show a property and how do you see the property here it is given there are some materials mentioned here plastic refill will be uh, material which is used for rubbing the refill is a polythene balloon with a polythene or hair <coughs> then eraser which is you rub it on the wool and other materials also so in common life you must have seen that the objects which are normally rubbed they are in common life you have seen if you rub a plastic scale on your hair it gets charged and it starts attracting paper so these papers which are attracted they are proved in this book with an experiment here so first understand the experiment in this it is not nothing complicated if you just follow the activities there are two balloons shown here and uh, the green and yellow differentiate <coughs> inflate two balloons fill them with 
air and then hang them. Now when you hang them, rub both the balloons with woolen cloth. So you have rubbed the two balloons with same material. So when you rub the two balloons with same material and then you bring them close, you are seeing that the two balloons are moving away from each other. So this is because the two balloons are rubbed with the same material and the two balloons are also made up of same material. So this means that when two objects are rubbed with the same material, they show a property which is same. Due to that property, they repel each other. And then in this activity, there is a pen refill and place the tumbler using in the stand and then so this, these are just simple activities. Rub the refill also with polythene and bring it close to a charged refill. And when you bring it close, you will see that the two refills which are of same material will show repulsion. They will repel each other. They will move away from each other. In this picture, the concept you have to understand that you are having a refill air and there is a balloon. So when you have got both the objects charged, it is seen rub a refill and place it gently in a tumbler bring an inflated charge balloon now both balloon and refill are different materials what will you see so that is summarized here so these three points are the concept of charging a charged balloon repels a charged balloon because both are same material so they will have same charge a charged refill will repel a charged refill because both are same material but a charged balloon will attract a charged refill because both are opposite or different materials so this shows that the charge on the balloon is of different kind from the charge on the refill so therefore charge of the same kind repel and the charge of different type attract so this is the basic and it is a convention to call now this this thing can be asked from within that the uh, the charge acquired by a glass rod when it is rubbed with silk so glass and silk when you rub a glass rod with silk the charge acquired by the rod is positive so you have to just remember that when two bodies are rubbed with different material they both acquire a charge which is opposite so here it is written that the glass rod acquires a positive charge. It means that the silk has acquired a negative charge. When a charged glass rod is brought near a charged plastic straw, now both are different materials, they will be attraction. So what will you think the kind of charge that the charges are opposite? So in short, we can say that when the charges are produced on two bodies which are of different material they will have opposite charge and <clears throat> the next concept is transfer of charge now what is the use of explaining the charge here because you will see that how is the charge produced in the air so transfer of charge and in this that the charge moves from one body to another body and there is a cardboard this is explained here in the form of an electroscope so this is important in this you have to label this that there is a glass container an electroscope is a device which is used to detect the charge on a body which is used to detect not only the charge on a body it is also used to detect how much charge is on the body and also what type of charge is on the body so in your syllabus there is a explanation that electroscope is just a device which is used to uh, detect that the body is having a charge or not so there is a glass container in which there is a um, wire and at the end of the wire there is aluminium strip a thin piece of aluminium is hung and the two ends are separate the at the top the wire is passed through a cardboard in which there is a hole now just simple experiment is you bring a charged like if i rub a plus a scale or i rub a pencil and i touch on this wire so what will happen the charge will be transferred to this wire and it will enter the two ends of the 
there are two ends of this so the two ends will have the same charge once the two ends acquire the same charge the two wires the two ends of the aluminium foil will open up so this is written here the aluminium foil will receive the same charge from the charge ripple through the paper clip and the strips carrying the similar charges will repel so what will you see you will see that the two aluminium strips open up this device is called the electroscope so this tells that uh, why did the aluminium foil change its position because of the charge thus we find that the electrical charge can be transferred from a object to another object through a metal body okay so this portion is just to explain that there is a charge and the charge can be transferred and this concept how is it related to the natural phenomena that comes after this repeat charging of foil strips and touching the paper clip so when you do this again you will see why does this happen that the foil strips collapse now when you have charged like this container is charged uh, this aluminium strip is charged suppose the strip is having a plus charge and you bring a rod at the top a plastic scale and it is having a charge now since the aluminium is already having a plus charge if more plus charge is given to it it is seen that the two ends of the foil will open up more they will separate more because more charge has entered and both the ends will have same charge so they will repel each other now converse thing if i if this is plus charge and you bring a negatively charged body then the two ends will come closer so this is the only thing in detail explanation is not in the syllabus just a basic idea of what is charging and it is seen oil strips are discharged when you want to discharge the body you have to just touch the foil you have to just touch the wire at the top with your hand and it is uh, it will get discharged which is called earthing so earthing is the process by which a body loses the charge to the earth now this earthing is useful in this part which is the story of lightning so what is story of lightning the story of lightning if you just understand this picture here you are seeing that there are cloud shown just remember that whenever a cloud is formed the upper end of the cloud is having plus charge and the lower side of the cloud has negative charge so why does this happen because whenever clouds are formed then they are having many drops of water so heavier drops may come down so heavier drops tend to acquire negative charge and the lighter drops acquire positive charge so in a cloud the lower end of the cloud acquires negative charge and here it is written now during the development of thunderstorm let's understand how is a lightning produced so just remember that whenever lightning is caused there are storms so when the wind blows at a high speed then the movement of there are water droplets which are hanging in the air these water droplets rub against the air and they get charged and because there are large amount of water droplets in the air they acquire a charge and this charge gets distributed in the cloud as shown in the figure now how does it get charged because of movement of the air when these clouds and it is written here the positive charges collect near the upper end and the negative charge accumulate near the lower edge there is accumulation of positive charge near the ground also now this is another thing the cloud acquires charge upper end plus lower end minus when this cloud moves over the ground over the earth then then there is opposite charge developed on the ground this is induction which is called the induced charge it is induced charge this minus charge 
will produce an opposite charge on the body and therefore the charge is discharged to the earth it is called lightning discharge so lightning or high objects which are near the earth the process of electric discharge between two or more clouds today we need not get right and now we know that when there is lightning cause this lightning is very dangerous this lightning can affect the destroy the building it can kill people also it can burn down trees also so people were afraid at the earlier time now this is considered normal so we will read how it is normal but there are some precautions which should be taken during lightning this is asked in the questions also whenever there is lightning uh, no give open place is safe you must be whenever you hear a thunder you should go to a safe place a safe place will be not in the open it should be a house if you are not able to then you have to do something else which is shown here after hearing the last thunder wait for some time before you are coming out so the point here is whenever you want to uh, protect yourself from lightning this is more for the places where more lightning takes place frequently so in our countries there are few places where lightning takes place but that also takes place in a particular part of the year so what are the do's and don'ts these are asked in the question also that if you are carrying an umbrella you should not move with the umbrella especially if its handle is because umbrella will have a metallic handle so uh, normally umbrella is mentioned here but umbrella will be dangerous if the clouds are near the earth normally the clouds are not near the earth they are away but if you are carrying any metallic object in your hand it is not safe if you are in a forest then take shelter under shorter trees not under the higher trees if you are under a higher tree then there will be chance of lightning strike if no shelter is available and you are open then stay away from the poles or any metallic area where there is wire because they will attract lightning <coughs> and if you are caught then this is a position which is shown uh, this is a position because if you are at a higher lower altitude then lightning may not affect you if you are inside a house then what you should do so you can underline during a thunderstorm contact with these should be avoided wherever there is any metallic and if these metallic things are connected outside the house then also it is safe to use mobile phones however it is not wise to call a person if you are using a wired telephone a telephone which is connected through a wire and uh, normally during lightning you are advised not to use any electrical device which is so electricity normally is disconnected if there is a thunderstorm you will observe thunderstorm and if there is a heavy storm then also the electricity goes off this is for safety bathing should be avoided bathing means if you are taking bath and you are using a tap and the tap is having running water which is coming from the top of a building so if there is lightning in the sky then due to the top of the building the lightning can enter and can harm you electrical appliances should be unplugged so this is done for saving the electrical appliance from any electric shock so whenever there is lightning in the sky you should not go out stay inside and uh, remove the plug of all the appliances in the house to save them from electric discharge because if there is electric discharge outside then uh, and on the electric pole then the heavy voltage of the electric discharge will enter through the wire and damage the appliances which are in the house so always plug devices which are even a mobile phone if it is connected to a charger the charger may get damaged and some of these things you might have observed in your in your common life so what is done to protect ourselves this is important a lightning conductor a lightning conductor is used to protect uh, houses from electric discharge and uh, like if there is a tall building and there is lightning in the sky so that lightning can enter 
this building and if there is a tank there is a metal pipe it can destroy the building therefore to protect the building you connect a lightning conductor at the top of the building which is a lightning conductor which looks like this so in this lightning conductor uh, there is a rod which is connected which is having a long rod and there are pointed ends at the top you might have seen this over buildings which have metal objects at the top so these are the rods which are connected to this is a lightning conductor and it is not something complicated this is the upper end of this lightning conductor which is connected through a metal pipe and this metal pipe goes on the side of the building and then it goes deep inside the ground and this rod goes underground and there is a metal plate at the side and which is having lot of carbon and it is buried deep inside the ground how does this lightning conductor protect you whenever there is electric discharge then uh, due to induction we read induction here that whenever lightning discharge will take place opposite charge is developed and the lightning enters inside what happens if there is a lightning conductor in your house or near a telephone tower you must have seen at the top then the opposite charge is developed the clouds are having plus charge they will produce opposite charge on this and the current is it is not a current but the whole pipe which is outside the building conducts the charge inside and this pipe which is in, on the side is not touching the building it is insulated so the heavy voltage from the sky enters the ground and goes inside the earth and the earth is huge so there is no damage done to the earth the earth uh, directly absorbs all the heavy voltage and the building is safe so this is how the lightning conductor saves us from the damage the next natural phenomena is an earthquake during an earthquake now earthquakes are caused in different areas of the earth and the phenomena apart from earthquake can be predicted you know that there will be a storm but earthquake is a phenomena which cannot be predicted so during whenever there is a uh, whenever there is a lightning strike or there is a cyclone or thunder then you are given safety measures but when there is an earthquake you there is no warning signal because you can't predict when it will happen therefore there is a natural phenomena which is considered the dangerous a major earthquake occurred in india on this time 2005 and there are more earthquakes you might have experienced in your city also that whenever there is an earthquake there is a picture shown in the book but this picture is only uh, you can relate to this picture if you have seen this actually happening you might have seen it in movies also or pictures but an earthquake is something which is uh, no one can describe only the person who has seen and felt it he will be able to describe so when there is an earthquake there is vibration inside the earth the vibrations inside the earth it is described here an earthquake is a sudden shaking or trembling of the earth how does the earth tremble earth is fixed why doesn't it tremble every time so it is caused by a disturbance deep inside the earth so deep inside the earth all of you have studied in geography that the earth is a having a outer crust and the center of the earth is called the core or which is having uh, mostly semi liquid thing now there is a mantle and there is a crust outside now this area which is in the liquid and semi liquid form is very hot due to this heat there is large amount of gases produced now these gases cannot go out so they try to push the earth outside and they are released in different forms it is described here and the thing here is the outermost layer of the earth is not in one place so when there is high pressure caused 
inside because the earth is very hot from inside the huge gases which are producing pressure inside there is a semi liquid and at the top on which we are living inside on the earth that is actually solid so this pressure of the gas produces crack on the earth these are in different plates there is a picture shown here which is showing the whole shape of the earth and there are some black lines shown in the picture <coughs> these black lines are the cracks which are produced and uh, uh, you cannot see them with the eyes they are the satellite images these are the cracks which were formed on the earth during the formation of the earth and what happens uh, these cracks are the formed on the crust of the earth each fragment is called a plate these plates are in continuous motion why are they in motion because of the pressure created by the gases inside the earth due to the pressure created the upper layer of the earth is pushed outside and there is movement there is vibration this vibration is seen in the form of earthquake there is a picture shown here which is showing movement of the earth plate now what are these plates these this is the surface of the earth and these are the cracks so since the earth is spinning and there are gases inside they are putting pressure on the earth outer layer the layer which is inside is having lot of pressure which keeps on releasing the pressure outside and this pressure puts pressure on the outer layer of the earth which is shown here in the form of plate and there are cracks why are there cracks because of the uh, during the formation of the earth in the beginning the earth was a gas it cooled down when it cooled down it started changing into uh, solid so when it cooled down the outer layer of the earth cooled down and it became solid but the inner part took long many years billions of years it took until today it is not cool so from the outside the earth is partially solid and it is having crack because of the pressure so this change in the pressure causes earthquake it is described in the book which is shown in this diagram and these names you have to remember that this plate and this layer and this layer are putting pressure and therefore they slide over each other and this is seen in the form of earthquake the tremors on the earth can also the earth where there are volcanic volcanic eruption it creates like a, if there is a volcanic eruption yeah, then all the gases will be released from this area it will create a low pressure inside the earth because all the liquid and the lava has gone out when it comes out the area around that volcanic inside the earth uh, moves towards the low pressure why is there low pressure because all the substance has gone out due to difference in pressure there is also an earthquake then there is earthquake can be caused due to volcano it can also be caused when a meteor hits the earth or an underground nuclear explosion nuclear explosion can be man made or natural since earthquakes now we are reading the natural phenomena because the earthquakes are caused by movement of plate the boundary of the plates are weak these are the plates which they are talking about so there is a crack and they become weak the weak zones are known as the seismic or fault zones in india there are some areas these names you can underline in your book kashmir western and central himalayas northeast these are some areas so at least two names you should know the areas where there are chances of earthquake the power of an earthquake now this is important when do you say that the earthquake is powerful how much is the power the power of an earthquake is expressed in terms of a reading which is measured by a richter scale name of the person who invented uh, destructive earthquakes have magnitude higher than 7 now if you check 
on the net when was the earthquake in your city you will come to know that it, did you feel the earthquake last time it happened or you did not feel so you will come to know why didn't you feel because the earthquakes which are more destructive are having reading 7 if there is an earthquake whose intensity is 7 then most of the buildings are affected both Bhuj and Kashmir earthquakes had magnitudes greater than 7.5 so most of the uh, landforms buildings houses everything was destroyed because of the earthquake and in this picture it is describing uh, what happens and how so there is a diagram which is showing now this is a diagram of the ancient type of uh, seismograph it is the name of the machine which is used to detect measure the earthquake so if we just understand this there is a roller in which there is a paper rolled so imagine that this pencil is a roller and it is rolling and it has got paper outside it so when it is rolling there is a thread which is having a pendulum and this is touching the roller so when this roller keeps on turning the pencil is touching the roller and uh, it is continuously turning so you will see a simple line if there is an earthquake then this roller will, will be shaking the pendulum will also shake so when this shakes then the a roller which is rolling the lining on the roller will not come straight it will get moved so if there is more move then the graph will not remain straight it will become curved okay so this is ancient form of seismograph now there are digital seismographs the waves are recorded by the instrument called seismograph and the instrument is simply described here which i have described by studying these waves which waves the waves which are shown in the picture when you see these waves if the earthquake is very light then the uh, the graph will not be very big if there is heavy earthquake or strong earthquake then the pendulum will move more and you will see that there is destruction in this picture it is describing that if there is this is the top of the earth and inside the earth there is an earthquake the area which is directly above the earthquake because earthquake occurs deep inside the area which is directly above the earthquake that is called the epicenter and this area will have more effect it is given here and the areas which are in the nearby like if you are standing here and you are sitting on a bench and suddenly the bench is moved so you will feel the more effect if you are sitting on a very big plate and suddenly the plate is moved and some people are also around then you will feel the more effect so epicenter is the area which is directly above the place where there is an earthquake the place where the earthquake start is called the focus so you remember these names what is focus the place where the earthquake originates or starts and the area above the earth at the top is called the epicenter and when there is earthquake there is vibration inside these vibrations are like uh, ripples on the water and they make are they spread in outside when they spread outside the areas which are far away they also feel and that is called the seismic waves so if there is an earthquake in the northern india one one city like in delhi then it will not have effect on delhi it will have effect on the states which are nearby the delhi or the uh, places which are nearby the delhi so that is uh, the point about earthquake the line which is given in your book below this this you have to understand in science Richter scale is not linear it is not linear in the sense that an earthquake of magnitude 6 suppose there is an earthquake and the reading recorded by the uh, Richter scale is 6 this does not have one and a half time that means does not have one and a half times the destructive energy of an earthquake of magnitude 4 so you are comparing 6 with 4 
an increase of two like if you compare that the one place had earthquake four another place had earthquake six so what is the gap between the two how much is the difference in the richter scale two if the difference is two this means 1000 times more destruction a gap of two means this place is whatever effect happens to this place which is having a recording of six will have 1000 times more the earth architects will take how to where you hang wall clocks and you that you be careful to are four options when you are at home take shelter and not in the open because if you are under a table or under a bed then the thing which will fall on your head you will not be affected stay away from tall heavy objects if you are in a bed do not get up and try to protect your head if you are outside then find a clear open space if you are in open ground then you will have no chances you will have minimum chances of and you should sit down or sit properly do because if there is heavy earthquake you can fall down if you are in a car do not come out because if you are in a car then the car body of the car may protect you so if you are in a closed area then the closed area will protect you from effect so there are various other options if you are uh, like if if there is an earthquake in water now in this book there is no uh, there are no water earthquake which are caused yeah. tsunami is not mentioned here it was earlier but it has been changed so if there is an earthquake under the sea and you are in a ship then uh, then also there are chances so then people are told uh, because if there is earthquake under the sea there will be uh, vibrations and uh, all the water in the sea will get will shake and the ships which are traveling they will also be uh, in a danger so there are some precautions which are mentioned here precautions when you are inside and precautions when you are outside so these you have to remember so this is the last portion of this topic the question answers and explanations and some important topics of this i have uh, explained in the question answer and the link of that uh, i will put uh, after this video you can check out the description the question answers and the detailed description are there so uh, we will meet in the next class then if you have any doubt or suggestion type below this video see you in the next class